Good afternoon and welcome to our Computer Science and ISDS Symposia. This is part of our series right now that ISDS is having on the risks of the Internet of Things in society. We're putting computing everywhere and uh, in things that don't look like computers. And uh, if you just think about well, what could possibly go wrong, uh, how can these interfaces and all the levels of abstraction be punctured in just the wrong way to cause bad issues? Uh, it's, it's significant, it's scary, uh, and so we're trying to raise awareness to make a better future. Uh, it's our pleasure today, uh, Dan Hentler, uh, who's been uh, started at least two different security companies, uh, and is into home brewing but does not like hops. Uh, <laughs> and we'll be talking about uh, just shit it, they say. Be fine, they say. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Right. What could possibly go wrong? Actually, the sticker, right? Like somebody gave this to me at a con and I was like, that's perfect. Um, right, so um, I'm here to tell you what, what, how pleasant it is to exist in the burning dumpster fire it is uh, that we call information security. Uh, so about me, um, I'll not read the slide to you. I, I do stuff, I shout a lot, I go to a lot of cons. Um, this is not gonna be a very technical talk. Like there's not gonna be a lot of technical jargon. You don't have to be an expert to get this sort of stuff. Um, in most cases, this presentation is me basically shouting and flailing my arms and consuming alcohol on stage, complaining on why on earth, who decided this was a good idea, throw them on, you know, throw them in the river. Um, so, uh, how I did most of this stuff, um, it's again fairly straightforward, not a lot of technical stuff. Um, I started with the Shodan and then start and then moved to doing my own manual scans, and then basically uh, with the help of several other people that do the same. We basically do this as a hobby. Me and six or seven other guys scan the internet for fun. Uh, and you think, can't you get in trouble for that? Well, as it turns out, they haven't invented rules for that yet. So if you're playing in the space where there are no rules, you can kind of do whatever, unless you start getting a lot of people coming to your house with pitchforks and torches, then you might have a different problem. Um, uh, the methodology was pretty simple. When you're doing these massive, massive scans, like if I wanted to do one scan of the entire internet right now, I have a machine uh, in a data center connected to a gig link. Uh, and I can scan one port across all of IPv4, like the entire IPv4 internet. I can scan like port 80, for example, in 45 minutes. Like 45 minutes to 30 minutes, depending on the speed of the uplink. Sometimes I get 500,000 packets a second, sometimes I get only 250. Um, and you take all that resulting data of all the ports that are open, and then you do more interesting operations on them. But the bulk of the work is narrowing down stuff that's open versus stuff that's closed. And then what you do is you take that and then you pass it off to your second and third waves of processing, like taking screenshots or, or spidering a page or doing whatever you feel like. So uh, also, and as a side note, um, it is, it is uh, strict InfoSec compliance that you be harshly judged on your choice of animated GIFs. So <laughs> please, if, 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 uh, if you like, feel free to throw things. Um, so the question for today is if there's a thing and you can put a web server on the thing. Should you put a web server on the thing? And with that, I'd like to introduce today's mascot, Totes Magoats. Of course, put a web server on the thing. What can possibly go wrong? So it all began in probably 2010. I was working at Intuit at the time in their SOC. And uh, uh, Shodan had mysteriously showed up. And it turned out to basically be a compendium of port scan data that was available for search. And I said, hmm. Uh, my job is to make Intuit more secure. Let's see if there's anything in Shodan on Intuit. Oh, God. Um, yeah, and then it began. And my first foray into this was just finding webcams. Just, and, and this was entirely accidental. Like, I did not purposefully go and find webcams. Because, like, if you go back and you look at this interface, you're looking at, like, headers, right? So there's an SSH header. There's a, what is that, MongoDB? Yeah, MongoDB. So it's a lot of text, right? You can't just go and say, find me webcams. You kind of can, but you're not going to get any good results. Like you have to find out what web server they're running. Is it micro HTTPD? Is it light HTTPD? Is it twisted or whatever? You have to figure out what model camera you're interested in, what software it's running, and what version it's running. And then you have to look for unique identifiers in the headers. And then you can go and look for interesting things. And when you find them, it looks like this. Then you have to go through the second wave and take pictures manually. And at the time, I was just like, holding down the option key and like right click, right click, right click and opening like hundreds of tabs and manually going and reviewing every single one of these. So many nights spent until five in the morning going through tabs of bizarre webcams all over the planet that had who knows what on them. Uh, lots of just these random sort of boring ones, right? But like 
this was really funny, this particular one, because I saw this, and this was a, um, a DVR system with a web interface. You just go to it, and it's like uh, either completely open or default credentials, and you're looking at this thing saying, oh, that's interesting. And you go and you look it up, and it turns out I think it's a gold mine in France. Um, <laughs> and I'm looking at this going, wait, that looks familiar. That guy is looking at that interface. <laughs> Who watches the watchers? Me. I watch the watchers. <laughs> right? And then for, for some more meta, just more hair pulling like Jackie Chan.jpg, what are you doing? Um, this is a, a, a webcam that is a branded IQI. In the IQI office, at the desk of the engineers that work on the weather housing for the camera. I am watching the guys who work on the camera work on the camera with the camera. <laughs> <laughs> and and that, that dude in the white shirt, um, behind him, uh, it's obfuscated. And yes, we've watched for a while because we had nothing better to do. With, you know. um, <laughs> we didn't have jobs. Um, uh, he's, he's generating a, a 3D uh, model, and I, I couldn't tell what software it was, but he was gener generating a 3D model for, um, it was one of those masonry bolts that you use to, to drill into concrete to mount stuff, and it was for the base of the camera. So the dude's working on mounting brackets for the cameras, and his whole desktop is exposed, and you can just sit there on this camera and like watch the guy work every day. What could go wrong? Like, let's put a camera in the office and put it on the internet. Great idea. Then people like me come along and spoil it for everybody. Um, so you hear a lot about SCADA on the internet, right? Like industrial control systems connected to the internet that control power plants and dams and all sorts of stuff that shouldn't be on the internet. And some people think, oh, okay, well, I'll just, I'll not put it on the internet. I'll point a camera at it and put the camera on the internet. Well, it kind of helps, but still, like, what are you doing? This one I found um, before a talk in Amsterdam. I was in the speaker's room looking at results and just p playing with Shodan. And for the life of me, I couldn't figure out what on earth was going on here. Um, people kept walking up to this and like putting their face in it like this lady and then walking away. And I'm like, do they not know that like, so this is another IQI camera. These are like big IP cameras you see up in the corners of buildings. These are like weatherproof. Like this camera is like a $400 to $600 piece of equipment that you like mount. I mean, it's not attached to a laptop or whatever. It's like an actual physical camera. Can they not see it? It's like six inches away. It's like right here. What are they doing? It was behind a... Th um, a one-way mirror, and it was installed into an ATM. Why? Don't ATMs come with their own cameras? Why is this public? Like, and, and, and you know, and I was, I did that, on, like, I got up on stage, and I'm like, I don't understand, what are they doing? And somebody said, genius, you, you got bad crack, take your crack back to your crack dealer and tell them you sold your bad crack. It says ATM in the bottom corner. <laughs> oh, I just can't read, <laughs> right? But TLDR, most cameras are just boring. Most cameras are like empty parking lots or like a black camera because it's on the other side of the earth and the sun isn't over there. It's a garage or a cityscape or whatever. It's like people set up cameras to look at certain things. And unless you have context, they're meaningless. They're boring. Um, but you think, you know, how bad could it be? Like that can't happen everywhere, right? You can't just find this sort of stuff all over the earth. Yeah. Yeah. So let's get started on a real strong note. Um, did anybody see the news a while back about um, a steel mill getting hacked and like bad stuff happening? Does that sound familiar to anybody? In the middle of last year, there was. You can do that, as it turns out. Public on the internet, a steel mill. Twenty-four thousand kilograms of liquid steel, and you can tip it over. <laughs> Who thought this was a good idea? Like, somebody had to sign off. Like, there were business people in ties. Like, making these, yeah, so we should buy this equipment, and we should put it online, and, you know, we're, it's all compliant, of course. Yes, we had, we had industry standard regulators come in, blah, 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 blah. And at TLDR, at the end of the day, that is on the internet, and you can turn it all, you can, like, turn it over. Like, somebody thought this was a good idea. I, I, I don't, I can't even. Like, I have trouble articulating, right? Like, <laughs> Words fail me. This is why, I, this is why we drink. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> like, oh my god. Like, what happens if you, th it's, it's 1,215 degrees Celsius. What happens if that hits the ground? Like, people turn into vapor. <laughs> like, suddenly Terminator 2 happens. Like, um, 
this was a, a fairly interesting recent find. This is, um, I want to say this was in Lithuania or something like that. Uh, it's an automated license plate reader. What? Okay. A lot of that will happen uh, because the scans that I do are not narrowed down to a specific country or region. Um, they're just everywhere. All I know is the IP. And I can look it up, but I don't really care. Usually the UI tells you stuff. Uh, but in this case, yeah, it's a license plate reader that uh, takes photos of license plates, presumably for issuing tickets and speeding, just on the internet. Why not just redirect those pictures to your FTP server? Fun. <laughs> like, again, why? Um, this, was, this was new. This was, um, uh, Shodan recently started taking pictures of X desktops that were publicly accessible. Like, you have a, a Unix computer uh, that's running X11, and you issue the command to say, like, anybody can talk to my X desktop, this happens. Uh, so there's a bunch of laboratory equipment uh, that's doing micro CT scans that's on the internet. There's a bunch of pharmacies too, this is fairly recent. Water treatment facilities, why should they be any different? You know, like, it's just, you know, you can pipe sewage into drinking water, that's cool. I mean, I guess. Um, I haven't actually tried, I just take the picture and leave, but yeah. Um, <clears throat> boxes being hacked live. You can sit and watch attackers do things. Um, it's all, uh, it looks Italian? But on the right-hand side, you have um, what, looks more, what looks like a, uh, it might be an SSH brute force. Somebody's using this open machine to do SSH brute forcing. And it's just becoming more and more common. I've only seen a handful of these things, but so far, yeah, live, live hackery happening. Giant wood furnaces used for presumably corporate heating environments. Like this one is in, uh, I think this one was in Germany or might have been in Austria. But I had to look these things up. You can buy them. They're massive, mass. They go in the, they go in the basement of like a 20-story building and they, they heat stuff. Uh, cameras, again, except these cameras are controllable and RTSP is now being um, uh, discovered. And as it turns out, uh, when you tell the internet, hey, I found a camera in, where was this? This was in Prague. Uh, I found a camera, and this happened two weeks ago? I found a camera in Prague, and I just put it on Twitter. And I'm like, hey, look, I found a camera in Prague. And it's pointed at a meat counter. That's kind of fun. That makes me hungry. I want meat now. Um, a dude from the internet went there with a sign <laughs> and took pictures of the camera. So like, power of the internet, right? With our powers combined, form of dirty hackers. Like, some guy went, like, it was the, one, of, one of the followers I talked to who's in, I think he's in Sweden, runs a radio show. And he asked his listeners, hey, who's in Prague? And some dude said, me. And how close are you to this grocery store? And he's like, oh, I could walk there from work. And he's like, you want to go on an op? <laughs> uh, and there's, there's video I have. I actually have a GIF. Oh, I should show you guys this GIF. He was dancing in front of the camera. And we were recording the whole time. So I now have this GIF. Like it's, now you guys are in on the joke. So when I show you the GIF, you'll get it. Um, Somebody decided it was a good idea to put a VNC touch panel on a, a bus and then attach that to a cell modem. And now you can like watch this panel on this bus driving around in, Swe in, Nor uh, in Nor Norway. Uh, and you can see like what its cell signal is and you can see how much fuel it has and you can see like if you can read the language. Yeah, you can do stuff. It's a bus. Somebody, let's put a bus on the internet. Um, lots and lots and lots of conference gear. Uh, fun fact, these polycoms I've seen you guys have here, a lot of them are put outside of firewalls because the protocol that they use to communicate is a pain in the ass to deal with. So instead of setting up our um, H.263, H.264 firewall holes, because there's many of them, it's not just one port, the protocol is fickle. Um, people just put it outside of the firewall and they're like, I'm done, I don't care. Um, and they leave default creds. So like default creds and it's on auto answer, which is really funny. Because you can just go to Shodan and find like several thousand of these, install X meeting and just call them and eavesdrop on everybody. Isn't that the MIT logo? Um, maybe? Where? What am I looking at? <laughs> Good catch. Good catch. Right? Spot the problem. A little bit of audience participation. What's wrong with this picture? Um, this is a screenshot of some sort of like home automation system or home stereo system connecting somebody's phone to it, and it's giving you the Bluetooth MAC address of the phone. 
Um, which in and of itself is abstract enough to where it's not that big of a deal. But if you sat and watched this thing long enough, like you could probably do some interesting things. Um, this is just information leaking. Uh, if you know this person, then you can follow them because if their Bluetooth is on, like if they're um, crouching half store hidden douchebag like me, and I have their little uh, Bluetooth headset on them and it's on, uh, it, that's bro it's broadcasting this everywhere all the time. And you can track them in physical space. Like you can configure a drone to say, follow that Bluetooth address to go, and then it'll which creeps people out. Don't do it. <laughs> or don't tell them I told you to do it. Do it. Put it on the internet. Um, this was a first. I'd never seen this before. It's a train maintenance yard. And it's a camera on a Raspberry Pi that's set up to inspect the wheels on trains as they drive by. Uh, and brakes, which is really, really cool, I guess. Um, but it's just a VNC uh, uh, handler on top of a Raspberry Pi desktop. Like, you can just minimize this thing, and you have an embedded Linux machine running ARM you can do whatever you feel like with. So. This is in like, I think it was in Philadelphia or something like that. Um, you want to you wanna hack some stuff? You hack it from here. And then they think the train people did it. You know, what could possibly go wrong? Yeah, so, uh, North Korea totally hacked Sony, right. Um, if you want to print a badge for this company, you can print a badge. And you can be an employee. And you can walk right in the door. Ask me how I know. Um, yeah. No, I do that on gigs. Like, that's what I do as a profession. I, break into places and hack things. And one of the easiest ways, like you don't have to dress, like you hear stories about people dressing up in like UPS uniforms, like flower delivery. No, no. You hack the badge printer and you print yourself a badge. Then you walk in and ask the security guard, can I have my badge please? And they give you a badge and you walk in. Like you don't need to dress up. Like, yeah, pro tip. Um, I didn't know that taxis were online, but that was pretty cool. Um, I, like, I suspect you could probably get some interesting information out of this UI if you were like to go in and poke around. But legally speaking, it's one thing to like use an automated tool to take screenshots, and it's another thing to actually connect to it with a client and start poking at stuff. If you're using an automated tool, then there's like zero liability. Like you're just taking a screenshot with a command line tool, there's, I'm hands off. But if I connect with the thing, I actually have keyboard mouse control, then you, you get into a bizarre gray area, and that's, it's still, there's no law for this sort of thing because it's public, and public is public. And if it's public, like, it's public. Um, yeah, you may run into trouble with the uh, CFAA because uh, you're accessing your. Uh, some people will believe you're performing an unauthorized access. That logically doesn't. Yeah, it logically doesn't work because unauthorized means that they took some steps to make it unauthorized or did something. That happened to Bob Morris Jr. He got convicted of unauthorized access for system that required no authorization. Well, I've been doing this for five years and I talked to the feds and DHS and so far I'm not in jail, so. Just saying, like, I'm not Weave. Like, I didn't make a plan to go embarrass people in the press, and I didn't plan to, like, go and do O'Day stuff and Black Hat stuff. So, like, I'm very open about it. That's true. Sure. He was, his like, primary charge was conspiracy. Yeah. So, like, I'm taking, the funny part was, like, two days ago, uh, I, I got into a snit on Twitter with a bunch of people about uh, posting an Italian gas generator that was generating, like, 40 kilowatts of power uh, and saying, oh, right, look, Italian power generation, happy Monday. And people were saying, like, what are you doing? You're putting this on the internet for bad guys to attack. And I said, did you look at what actually happened? And they were like, no. I said, scroll back and then talk to me when you're done reading. And as it turns out, the same guy that, that, that got the, the dude in Prague to go to that grocery store for me reported it to the power company the minute I posted it, and it was offline less than an hour later. So I'm like, I, those are results. Like, I could try and go to them and say, please take it offline. I can send an email and hope to get in touch with somebody. I could try and make a phone call to people that don't speak English. And I could try and I could try and I could try and be like, be nice about it. And they'll, they'll ignore me. But I put it on the internet, and now it's a race between the bad guys and good guys. And there's more of us than there are them, at least paying attention to me. So like, in column A, I can do it properly. And maybe someday in a year, it'll go offline. Or I can post it to Twitter, and it'll be offline in an hour. Pick one. So like, do you want results, or do you want me to be nice about it? So, so far, people want results, and they don't care if I'm nice about it or not. Um, this guy might, but this is the first I've seen. Some dude practicing being a DJ with VNC enabled on his desktop. Like, maybe he was spinning live. I don't know, but I've never seen, like, a DJ live on VNC. Um, this, I've seen a couple of already, which is bizarre. This is a, a computer that's been infected with ransomware. And the presumption here is that because it's open VNC, somebody found this before I did. And instead of just taking a picture of it and moving along like I do, they infected it with malware. And then they moved along. And this is a thing uh, demanding one Bitcoin, uh, please send to this, this address. 
And the funny thing is, is that you get notified when people connect to your VNC desktop. Like it's not like it's hidden. Like VNC tells you somebody is talking, like somebody, like an anonymous user has connected, number of connected users one. Like it's not like it's a secret. If people are looking, like you can't install VNC on a Windows machine by accident. Like you have to go through the installation wizard. And then you have to manually say no authentication. You have to turn it off. That's all, that's all, that all, all machines are unattended, but, but that's the point is people put this stuff online, turn off authentication, and then walk away. And then they're surprised when it gets owned. So the problem is people just don't care. Effectively, the underlying, it's either they don't, they don't care and then on top of that there's some sort of quantification for why they don't care. It costs too much money. It's too much attention. I'm not, too, I'm not technically inclined enough. They have excuses, but at the end of the day, it's, they just don't care. And this is the result. And this entire talk is literally the result of people not caring about security. That's part of it. But in, 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 a, lot of, in a lot of cases, like with this, this is an embedded system that came with VNC um, uh, hardwired in. Like uh, Siemens equipment and HMI equipment and SCADA equipment has, um, they have an HMI, which is basically, they call it, it's an acronym for Human Machine Interface, which is a fancy way of basically saying, an embedded Linux computer or an embedded Windows CE computer with a touch panel on the front of it and just Ethernet out the back. And the Ethernet talks to a, a piece of SCADA equipment and that talks Modbus. So you have a thing that the people touch connected over a, an ancient protocol with no authentication or, or authorization of any kind to equipment that turns relays on and off. And those relays control power plants and dams and ice rinks and you name it, all sorts of stuff. And when people decide to take those pieces of equipment and put them online, you have that touch panel is now publicly accessible because some genius decided to put it on a publicly routable IP address. And now that that's public, the VNC endpoint that's supposed to be internal is also public and it has no authentication. So you get stuff like this, which is the monorail in Vegas. The monorail system in Vegas, apparently their ticketing systems are just public. So like, I suspect that if you tried hard enough, you could get into do these sorts of things and you can mess with uh, transactions and stuff. Because I suspect, you know, use cash or credit cards, you really want to be shady about it. You pop this thing, you install malware that, that scrapes memory for credit card numbers, and now you have the credit card numbers of everybody that, that buys a ticket from this kiosk. But I just take a picture and leave. <laughs> um, yeah, but, but to the point is, you know, you, it's, there's a lot of different variants of people don't care. And in, in that classification, you have people are not technically adept enough to understand the risk in what they're doing. Like, um, this, this one actually, um, it wasn't my screenshot, this is Jonathan Klisma's um, that I stole. This is a live attacker uh, harvesting money from PayPal accounts on presumably, maybe a hacked VNC desktop. Um, uh, possibly, yeah. Yeah, well it says in the name. Yeah, so. Yeah, a Windows box with uh, set up under the Russian OS, running Windows 8, um, 8 or 10, and uh, it's stealing, like, we're watching theft. <laughs> so, yes, feds follow me on Twitter. Yes, this got reported. Um, I'm not sure if anything happened, because we never hear after the fact, especially if it's extra national. Um, a methane factory, like, attached to a, or not a factory, but I should say, a methane power generation facility that's, um, uh, this is attached to a, what do you call it? No, not a farm. It's a, a landfill. That's one. Yeah, yeah, it's a natural landfill. This captures methane coming off of a landfill and burns it for energy. Um, no possibility for explosions here. Put, put it on the internet. That's fine. Just put it online. It's all good. Uh, it's, maybe it's Italian? Maybe it's Spanish? Oh, it's Manny Energy up there at the top right, if you guys want to Google them. Um, lighting controllers. Want to turn the lights off on somebody? <laughs> um, again, same sort of thing. Like, this is a touch panel somewhere. Somewhere in, like, a basement. This is a touch panel, and it's on a wall, and somebody paid tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars for this equipment, and it, it does, it functions for them, but the people that, that networked it to the networking in the building made it public, and now this thing is, and, and, and if you look at the top, you see the IP address is 192.168.1.101, which means somebody poked a hole in a firewall so that the internet could get to this. So again, this is not a mistake. Somebody did this on purpose. Somebody knowingly, legitimately logged into a corporate firewall, opened a port, and forwarded that port to that so that somebody could get to the lighting controller. So either A, they don't care, 
or B, they don't understand the implications of what they just did. Because now it's public. Like, a lot of people think, oh, I'll just put it online and not tell anybody about it. Yeah, well, then I find it. And then I end up here talking about it, and it's a slide. Like, and I know, I know a bunch of people that do that. We do this for fun, like in between gigs on weekends. Like some people go out and fly kites and go fishing. And like, no, we're in, we're in our nerd caves doing this. Like, this is VNC. Uh, I'll, I'll, I do have some HTML stuff, but that's because I, I got on a, I, I went off on a tangent. And I, ah, there's a screenshot I'm missing. I, if I have time for live demos, I'll show you a live demo. But like, uh, I do HTTP screenshots. There's way more HTTP than there is VNC. VNC, I can screenshot the whole internet in a day or so. Um, you might mention that uh, Microsoft Windows not having any reasonable remote connection interface basically brought VNC to life. Yeah. Well, it started with PC Anywhere back in the 90s. It was, you had to, if you wanted to, to, to remotely control a Windows computer, you had to install third-party software. Uh, and then first there was PC Anywhere, and then, then I think VNC came around, and then Microsoft caught up and said, oh, we'll, just, we'll make RDP. Now, now uh, as of two days ago, there's 3.8 and some change million RDP endpoints that Shodan has found so far. So you have a question to that? <laughs> people aren't using PowerShell. Is there a control yet? Uh, which, is what, um, which is what people do in industry. For remote control? Yeah, sure. You can use PowerShell for remote. Um, well, command line maybe. Yeah. But that's less interesting than this. <laughs> like this, all of this stuff is like basically a, a rat hole I fell into entirely by mistake. Like I, I, this all started because I just did a query in Shodan once, and then I realized you could find all sorts of stuff, and then it just turned into this ridiculous, like, it's like a Wikipedia hole, but it's five years long and it involves VNC. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, grow rooms now. Apparently, uh, this is a, a host in Colorado. That's the 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 touch screen interface to a giant marijuana grow room. And the funny part was when I put this one on Twitter, some people went, uh, "Hold on a sec, I might know that guy," which happens more often than you think. I'll tell you from personal experience, the internet is exactly this big. You put a tweet out into the world, and like some random will be like, "Oh, hey, I know that guy. Hold on," and you go, "Oh." Uh, there's, yeah, I'll get to that. I have a story about that. Uh, this is another one that was really funny. This is a um, Spanish or Italian gas generation turbine that's running on Windows 95. This screenshot is like a couple of weeks old. First, Windows 95? What year is it? Uh, and two, like, so again, somebody thought this was a good idea. Windows 95 does not come with VNC. And when you install VNC, it, mend, it makes you set up a password. You have to force it not to have a password. People did this on purpose. This is not an accident. So like, you want to have the discussion about authorization. Well, I have legitimate documented evidence that they took the effort to make it public. And if it's public, it's public. So we walk into it like a store. Um, this was interesting. I never thought that I'd find this ever. A yacht. A yacht. Um, I, I didn't spend a lot of time looking at what the controls could do. I mainly just I drank some more. Um, uh, so uh, to your point about HTTP interfaces, um, I found a webcam that, that was basically, so if you're ever wealthy enough to go to the Maldives, there's a restaurant in the Maldives that's shaped like an octagon that's submerged in the ocean. And it's low enough that it's basically sat right on top of or right next to a coral reef. So you're up to one side of it. There's like a coral reef that you're, you're sitting eating dinner, and there's like a three foot plate of plexi. And on the other side of that is the ocean with like sharks and fish and coral. And they have a webcam pointing out that window at the coral reef to look at the fish as like an attraction thing on their website. Well, I found the camera by just going on Shodan and looking at images. I might, if, I, if I go fast enough and I have enough time for the live demos, I'll just show it to you. Um, and I, I looked at the Maldives as a country. It turns out that the entire country is basically just this giant string of islands in the Indian Ocean. And it's just for really, really, really rich people to go vacation. So I scanned the whole country. And I took screenshots of all the web interfaces I found. Here's one of them. Why can I get to this? Why? Why can I get to this from the internet? Who thought this was a good idea? Here's another one. Search and download all our audit records. What could possibly go wrong? Just, like I said, animated GIFs, important. The help desk for the, air, the airline. The help desk for the airline is all on the internet. And you can just get to it and mess with it. I get excited about these things. Um, their entire wind farm 
Apparently, there's a wind farm that contributes to power generation in all these. Here's its interface. You can't turn anything on or off, but you can get full reports of um, how well they're doing and what the winds are like. You know, by itself, again, abstract and not necessarily particularly scary, but if you wanted to call, say, these guys and do some social engineering, now you have some ammo, right? Um, anybody here work with CEPM? Anybody play with a semantic endpoint protection manager? Okay. So if you have a big company that has thousands of machines, how do you put antivirus on thousands of machines? You, know, you join them to a domain, you install CEPM, you have CEPM talk to AD, and you say, here CEPM, take this package, go. And it installs this package out on all these machines. So do that with my malware instead. Use your AV to, we've done this during gigs, we've used CEPM to distribute malware. So like, this is on the internet. This is a, some company's internal antivirus solution that CEPM is specifically designed to manage Active Directory domains. So there are hundreds, potentially thousands of computers that are governed by this system and it's public. So like, <laughs> also um, signage in their hospital. If you want to know where is where, again, if you ever want to conduct a social engineering campaign against some of these places, there is just this overflowing wealth of information on the internet that you can tap to get whatever information you want because somebody took the time to make it public. Um, also, if you want to book a, uh, you want to book a table, um, DJ night is from 21:30 at the water bar. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, there's enough name like. It's Mrs. Birthday, Miss, Mr. Schiffer Bettina. If we had enough time, I would just say, everybody that's got a laptop, Google this guy. And we would, as a, as a room, just dox the dude here, just based on this slide. We, all we have is a name. You know, we know that this guy is at a, at, a, at a place that one night in a hotel room with less than six months of notice costs $13,000, gives us an idea of the budget we're dealing with. And we know that there's birthdays and we have, anyway, I could go on, but just use your imagination. Um, I did not know that these existed, but I found them entirely on Shodan. These are um, machines that are designed to take industrial, or it, they're designed to work in an industrial fashion and they take x-rays of chicken. <laughs> it's got a legit reason, right? So like you go and you buy mechanically separated chicken from the store, you get like chicken breasts right out of the, they go through this x-ray machine to make sure that there's no bone in them. Makes sense, but like, why? Somebody put it on the internet, and that's me. I'm like, huh? Eh. Yeah. This took a lot of Googling. This was, also, this took a lot of Googling because I didn't want to believe that's what it was. It's actually a, like, um, high, hygienization plant. It's basically um, sewage treatment, specifically poop sewage on the internet. Like, what kind of trouble, what kind of mischief can you get into when you have buttons that control poop? Right? Think of that scene from Die Hard where all the gas gets redirected, but it's not gas. <laughs> right? Um, I couldn't tell what this, thing, what, the, what this thing was. I think it's an industrial sewing machine, but I could be wrong. I didn't spend a lot of time looking into it. I just said, oh, that's colorful, and took a screenshot and figured I'd, I'd, uh, uh, so I'd get more, it later. looks more like a greenhouse. Trees can be sewn. Possibly. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm unaware of automated greenhouse facilities. It's possible. I have no idea. But yeah, worth Googling. Uh, every one of these slides is a rabbit hole. Like you could spend a day on every one of these slides just looking stuff up. And So this is a very, very, very um, shallow topical coverage of a very wide array of bizarre things that are on the internet for no good reason. Like a pig farm. Why? Like, like I know how many pregnant and lactating animals they have. Great! Let me call the board. Um, machines that feed hay to Fred and Jack. I guess they're hungry. I don't know. Hydrogen fuel cells. This is one of my first big findings, was you can telnet into a hydrogen fuel cell. On the internet, completely public, and this is pre-login. So this is like, it asks for credentials. And this is the information that it leaks before you log in. <laughs> like again, somebody thought this was a good idea. This is, yeah. oh, it burns. Um, wind turbines, like a singular one, like you can log into these things and again, completely public, um, and you can see how much power a wind turbine is generating. Uh, power meters, 
Uh, this one's attached to an apartment building. Industrial HVAC stuff, like for controlling buildings such as the one we're in now, like all these vents are these um, uh, images on the right. And then larger versions of the same system, uh, wherein you start getting into multiple water heaters where you have contents under pressure, which maybe you can do some stuff to cause like some Mythbusters-esque stuff to happen. And then why on earth is this even online? Like why would you do this? It's, it's oh. We sorted it out in, where was I? Brussels. I did a, I did a presentation, um, not Brussels, Belgium. Um, I did a presenta presentation in Belgium and this slide was in there. And somebody actually said, oh, I speak Italian and this is what it is. It's like a, um, a Italian water treatment facility that's just online, public. Why? <laughs> um, Someday I want to have this problem. Someday I want to have a house that's so big, I need industrial SCADA equipment to manage it. Hopefully I don't put it online. But you know, uh, if you really wanted to creep these guys out, like you go to this house and you find this graph, and then you know when they're running their heaters, or when their lights are on, or when their lights are off, and you start getting an idea of when they're home, or when they're on vacation, and you start going into creeper mode. Um, solar water heaters. like. Mainly, I don't want to say a passive system because it's got stuff that runs, but again, like, uh, why? Uh, somebody put it online so they could look at it from work and they made it public and now everybody can see it. Uh, anybody familiar with that particular uh, interface? Like, you probably see these things all over the place. I have a story about where I was in a room one time that had uh, one of those things um, and we couldn't, for the life of us, figure out how to get the thing because the air AC was just blasting. It was like 40 degrees in the room and we were all freezing. Um, and despite all of our effort of turning the power up, or uh, turning the heat up, it never went up. And now that I found this thing, I just imagine some kid sat in the back corner going, <laughs> and just turning it back down again. Because it's public. Public is public. Anybody can find this stuff. And, and in a lot of these cases, I'm not the first one here. Like the one that I showed you before, where there's like a machine that was live being hacked, and machines that are large. Like, I'm not the first guy here. I'm just the guy telling the internet about them. Um, so uh, for the people I was talking to earlier, uh, if any of you are in the room, that I talked about these machines that are basically like Raspberry Pis that are uh, controlling stuff. This is what they look like. This is what the web interface looks like. Um, and yes, it can get worse because toast my goats, of course. Generally, security is a horrible, 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 horrible joke. Nobody cares about it at all. Uh, if you can't spot the clear text password in this, it's right there. The password is neater. Um, and if you decide to actually touch the thing, uh, well, in some cases, like you say, okay, well, I'm going to actually go beyond just looking. Let's poke around and see if we see anything interesting. So you find a, a completely um, innocuous thing like a, a camera controller, right? So you look at this camera controller, and without touching anything, you can see in the top right-hand corner that there's a glass door and a logo. Uh, based on the IP address, you can tell that it's in Newburyport, Massachusetts. Uh, and then you take the, the image, and then you flip it horizontally, and you get... The company name, which I forget what it was, but their title is Security Integrators. Good job. Um, this is as close as Google Maps could get us to the place, and this is entirely passive reconnaissance over the internet. We do this for every gig. Like every company that hires us, we go and we see what we can find on the internet, see what they have connected. We find their company information. We look at them on Google Maps. And a lot of times, we can get into an organization entirely without ever sending a single email or picking up the phone or sending any kind of malware. We can just ask nicely and get let in because we know enough information about them online to just do that sort of thing. Um, I didn't do this. This was reported to me after the fact. But one of the cameras that I found, uh, some prank call internet radio show got a hold of and called the pizza place. And um, they called the pizza place because they found the camera. And the, the girl that answered, um, they told her that they were like tech support and that they were having trouble with the computers and that she needed to do a bunch of stuff because it would fix the computers. And this must have been like 1 or 2 in the morning because there was nothing going on. They, they told her to hold up this code to the camera because it would authorize, it would authorize the camera to do something. So she put OMG hacks, <laughs> right? Uh, and then you see that on the computers back there on the left, there's three computers. But the one to the left, it looks like it's wrapped with brown paper. Um, they told her to do that because it had a virus. And she was like, OK. <laughs> Right? And then they told her to wave, and she did. I mean, it was all harmless, right? Nobody got hurt. Nothing got actually broken. But like the power of social engineering, all they had was a camera feed. And they were able to call this person and tell them that, like, yeah, we know everything about the environment you're in because they can see where they're in. And who could possibly know all this stuff, right? Well, apparently anybody on the internet if you're bored enough. Um, 
large industrial um, evaporative coolers, uh, which look like this, and then have logs like this. And this is how I got one of the phone calls that I got. Uh, so a little bit of a little bit of um, operational security awareness in that. Uh, the name of your computer gets recorded to some of these things when you connect to them, despite however, however uh, benign your connection might be. Um, so in, in my case, uh, at the time, my, the name I had set to my computer was a resolvable domain name. So the person saw the log, looked at the name, and sent me an email. And was like, why is your computer con con connecting to my controller? To which I responded with as, as canned as I could possibly write an email that basically says, hello, thank you for writing us. Your machine was scanned by our scanner. It appears to be publicly accessible on the internet. The reason that you saw a log entry was because our scanner has connected to you and has taken a screenshot of the interface for research purposes. If you have any questions, please call this phone number, blah, 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 blah. blah. And I never got a response, but the machine went offline less than an hour later. Um, anybody know what a Liebert is? Lieberts? No? They're giant UPSs. Uh, anybody ever put a UPS in test mode? No? You know what happens when you put a UPS in test mode? It disconnects the battery from the load. When that happens, everything attached to the UPS goes offline. Lieberts are this big, and they're in data centers. So put two and two together. You want to turn off a data center? Because you can. Um, so Lawnworks is, uh, uh, iLawn is a company that makes Lawnworks machines. The Lawnworks machines speak uh, uh, Lawnworks. And Lawnworks is a protocol that is used to control SCADA equipment and SCADA devices. Uh, its web interface looks like this. And this long list of stuff here on the left are um, sub, like, I don't know what you call this, like they're, they're slave units. You can stack these things like Devo hats. You have one master unit, which unsurprisingly, well, you have one master unit, and it's connected to a whole bunch of these slave units. And uh, uh, <clears throat> in a discussion I was having earlier, I don't remember where, like you have um, companies that uh, their bread and butter is managing these sorts of, these sorts of installations in this infrastructure. They... Um, they will come to you and say, pay us and we'll manage all your SCADA equipment and all your facilities and your HVAC and your electrical and that sort of thing. And they'll deploy their little box. And their little box phones home to the mothership. And this is the mothership that has no credentials or authentication of any kind. The other ones do. You try and get into those, and they all have creds, because this thing needs creds to get to them. But this thing doesn't have creds. This was in Copenhagen, Denmark, if I remember correctly. And it was like a third of all the buildings in downtown Copenhagen that you could just turn off. One of them is a place called Gigantium. And that's right now, it's, it looks like a basketball court or something. But usually under there, there's an ice rink that you can defrost. In case you want to mess with them really hard, here's a layout on their website of what the facility looks like. Like, they, it's, right? People are taking phones and putting Java applets on phones that turn their phones into webcams and then putting them on their wall, which is really funny because this completely public thing says, click here to play audio in the external player. Uh, and then there's uh, another little pop-up. You can like open camera controls, a little button at the top. It allows you to turn the, the light on and off. You can like signal Morse code through the, the light on the back of the phone to these people. They turn that off really quickly. Um, I didn't think traffic lights would be on the internet, but I was surprised. <laughs> License plate readers, where the, uh, the first asterisk line, no, I'm sorry, three dots. Basic beds with no security. Good job. Well done. ATC, is that uh, uh, it's using it's 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 not a modem. It's 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 Telnet, but it's speaking serial. Because this is the web front end, uh, and I thought this was a red light camera. It's not a red light camera. It's a, uh, and and this is the, actually the EFF was suing several places because of this. License plate readers that are installed places that literally just take photos of every single car that drives by. I'm like, wow, that's not shady or anything. The funny part was that they're completely public with default credentials in every place, so they, you don't even have to log in. But if you go into the config, it's configured to send pictures to an FTP server, so you could just send it to a different server. Fun times. Um, I suspect nobody here remembers RuggedCom or spends a lot of time doing data switching. Okay. Well, if you you want to take so this is the this is the interface to the RuggedCom, um, the RuggedCom interface. Can anybody want to take anybody want to take guesses as to what those obfuscated passwords are? because that's what they are. <laughs> these are the credentials that people put in these things. And they're like, oh, no, no, there's creds, there's passwords, it's secure. Um, the way to, there's a plugin you can get for Chrome. It's a deobfuscator plugin. It basically takes everything that's an asterisk or a little dot and just shows you what's under it. And programmatically speaking, the way to do this is that the credentials are stored on this box. 
And to present the web interface to you, and to present those obfuscated fields with those letters and numbers, you have to give it what to obfuscate. So this thing is sending you its passwords and then obfuscating them. And then you just like right click on obfuscate and you have the credentials. It's like, they're, not even, they're, they're not even trying, they're going backwards. Um, so to the point of like the legality of things and getting that phone call from the DHS for the first time, one day I was on Safari on the internet and I found this. And I said, this is the most horrific web defacement I've ever seen in my life. This is ridiculous, they drew this in MS Paint. I didn't Google barrage de fumel. In French, that means fumel dam. Um, I tweeted a picture of this and M. Tober, I'm sure you know M. Tober, Mike Tober. Uh, I didn't know him at the time. Some random on Twitter was like, hey, um, you can let that Java run. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to let that Java run. It's your Java, and I'm not going to let you shell me. No, no, no. So he convinced me to do it. I ended up spinning up a VM in Windows and doing it in like a, uh, a segregated environment. And it looked like this, to which I blinked a lot. Because like the top of that little black box says, 1,173.98 kilowatts, which is 1.1 megawatts. And the one below it says 1,152.05 kilowatts, which is another 1.1 megawatts. This is a French hydroelectric plant generating somewhere in the neighborhood of 2.5 megawatts on the internet because. I'll save that story because I'm running a little short on time. But TLDR, I wasn't the first one there, and this dam has flooded people already. And apparently, they don't care. Like, the French uh, ICS uh, cert people that, like, so the DHS called me about that. I reported it to them, and I worked with them to try and get it taken offline. They called the ICS people in France, and they literally said, go away, we're on vacation. Like, it took over a year for this dam to go offline. Over a year. And I reported it to two governments. Also, that UI was built in front page. Front page on SCADA. Somebody bought it and then put it on the internet. You'd think that they would learn, but they don't. Here's another one, and another one, and another one, and this one's a month old. Like, what is it with France? What is their deal? Oh, too much wine? I don't know. Um, satellite systems were a lot more boring than I thought that they would be when I found them on the internet. They're just tickers that show you how much traffic is passing. I'm like, oh, that's unfortunate. NAS storage arrays, you know, you put your backups in a secure place, but then you put that secure place on the internet directly. Good job. I, I just, I, I don't know. This one has little gates you can lift that lock the car inside of it, and so you can have a little alarm that sounds. I don't know. I'm nine, really I'm nine. I look, look I'm, like I'm not nine, but I'm nine. Um, so you'd think humidifiers aren't particularly interesting, uh, but these they make massive, massive ones that go in hospitals that do things like raise the humidity levels and the burn ward and things like that, um, to where their advertising material says that the internet connect or the, the network connectivity is wired directly onto the board, and in their bragging rights and their in their marketing material they show that they these are in the White House, to which I just went. <sighs> They're making it way too easy. Uh, like uh, 911, like emergency telco gear. Um, this is a VoIP system that takes 911 calls. This is its interface because it's public. And you can go through these public things and you can see call records and you can change call routing. What could possibly go wrong messing with a 911 system? Again, who thought this was a good idea? Like, why is this on the internet? Why? This one just, I'll just let you read it. Just. Tell me when you see the hair pulling thing. This is from like two years ago, by the way. <laughs> what year is it again? <laughs> 10th of August, 2001. Support for Netscape 6. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Script found on GeoCities. <laughs> Who remembers GeoCities? Who remembers when GeoCities went away? Like, there are people that are born now that are after when GeoCities went away, and this is live code on the internet. Speakers that you can send MP3s to that will play the MP3. Somebody thought this was a good idea and put it on the internet. No trolling can happen. Obviously, it'll be fine. Just ship it, whatever, who cares? Wine coolers, large enough to have an alarm for the champagne. <laughs> this is some hotel in New York. I honestly don't remember which. I encourage you to try to find it. Don't tell them I sent you. This is what their fridges look like. 
And then this, get, this is where it gets interesting. Um, CERN, lots and lots and lots and lots of hosts at CERN, like over 300, publicly accessible. And when I contact, they have, an IC, they have a, a, a CERN department. They have a computer emergency response team. And I got a hold of them. And I was like, you guys, are you sitting down? Um, all of their stuff was online, like all of it. If you wanted compute time on CERN stuff, Imagine mining Bitcoin on all of CERN's machines at once. Like, particle physics, pff, cryptocurrency. Like, pff, right? You know, this is um, uh, specs, uh, one set of specs on their compute cloud. Here's the physical locations of their compute cloud. Here's the physical locations of their compute cloud um, with the scoring of how, how busy the CPUs are. Here's their core network switching fabric infrastructure. Why is this online? This is no. Um, you want a VM at CERN? You want to? You want? Tell you what. Let's let's set up a Kali VM at CERN, and we'll do all of our hacking from CERN, right? Like nobody will catch us because this is what their network looks like. Like, oh my God! This is why we drink. Uh, but thankfully, again, um, I contacted them, and they took off like 75 to 80 percent of all of my findings. I turned in, and they took them all offline. So that's really good. Um, this this was really interesting. This is a, a, a gondola style ski lift with an off switch. <laughs> it gets better. Um, somebody translated it for me. If anybody can speak French in the room, please correct me if I'm wrong. But if, if I recall correctly, you can stop this. <laughs> you can stop the gondola, open the doors remotely, and shout at the speakers to tell people to jump. <laughs> like, <laughs> it just at some point it just gets stupid. Um, gigantic, massive solar arrays that follow the sun, like really expensive ones, is a predict. Pre Presumably used in industrial fashions. They're called Atlas Solar Trackers. Um, this is their web interface, which is really funny because uh, it was so broken, the JavaScript didn't work at all. It's one major security feature is the fact that you can't do anything to it because it, <laughs> it doesn't work. Um, you know, this is what the, the this is another um, solar uh, array readout, and this just tells you like you can't do much from this one. Just like look at what kind of power is being consumed. Um, this guy, you can mess with his garage door. Like, what could possibly go wrong? A home automation system that lets random people on the internet open and close a garage door and turn the alarm off. This is a security system, right? Then we have some .gov oopsies, which is like, so the, the DHS thought it was a glorious and amazing idea to say, you know what we're going to do? We're going to create a spectrum. We're going to take the 4.9 gigahertz spectrum, and we're going we're to reserve it for us so that we can use it, and nobody else can talk on the DHS frequencies. Because if you can't buy 4.9 gigahertz stuff, then obviously you can't talk to our equipment. Yeah, we're secure. Um, except you can just buy it from the site if you really wanted. Uh, however, you know, I looked it up. So there's this, this TR49 series product, blah, 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 FCC, 4.9 gigahertz frequency band allocated to the DHS. That's cool. It's got SNMP open on the internet, completely public, and it will disclose everything inside the SNMP readouts if you ask it nicely. And it will, and it will tell you, like, the uh, string that I um, blanked out was some lady's name that uh, it tells you what office she's in, and it tells you, like, there's, like, a phone number. I don't think it was on this one. Maybe I lost the slide. But yeah, the, the SNMP contact information for this piece of equipment um, displayed the contact information for the lady who's in charge of the program that deploys this hardware. So like, you don't need to hack the wireless signal because the access point is public on the internet. Why? With SNMP open, why? With somebody's contact information in there with their phone number and their title and things like that. So you can just call them at their desk and be like, hey, I need these plans. And they go, who are you? Oh, I'm just at this other office. Cool, just fax them here. OK. Like, <sighs> I never thought I'd find fish on the internet. That was interesting. This was a cool story because my, my, my wife's from England. And one of the first times I went over there, I said, we got to go to Oxford. And she was like, why do we got to go to Oxford? And I said, because of that. Um, so we went to Oxford. And I put my hand on this thing. And there is an in, uh, uh, this amazing sense of fulfillment to randomly find this thing on the internet and then travel to that country and touch it. Um, so that was really cool. It was lobster control on the internet. That's cool. Um, I don't understand why a pool is complex enough, like a swimming pool, is complex enough that you need a computer to control it and or put it on the internet. But that, um, right. So you can set it to manual and dump the tank. Um, here's another one. 
with the same thing. Like, manual, eee! maybe people die, I don't know. I've never killed anybody with a pool. <laughs> um, but seriously, I, I don't even. Like, they make these things, you can buy them and put them. Again, same, same sort of thing. Somebody took the time to make this public. Um, I just don't even, this is, uh, <laughs> a giant Korean power generation facility. I don't speak Korean, but you could probably mess with this if you can read the buttons. Or you can just turn the news on and just start mashing buttons and see if anything happens on the news. <laughs> a coal mine. This is kind of neat. There's a, a combine. That little yellow guy, I think is probably a lot bigger than the picture does it justice. Um, but yeah, this is a, a, coal, a coal mining facility in Lithuania, I think. Somebody, there's, uh, we found about eight of these. So who knew? Coal mines. No, but you think, like, you think, oh, that, that's got to that's gotta be bad. Um, wait, where is it? It says, hold on. Oh. Above that little symbol, above 80 on the far right, you can see barely legible, it says demo. And you're like, oh, that's not real. Uh, oh, and the, the heartbeat looks too um, perfect. It's just copy pasting the same little wave over and over and over again. Like, no heart does that. That's too perfect. That's cool. Here's, here's one that is real, and it's a, it's a, a maternity ward, and this is monitoring um, heartbeats of, uh, pregnant, uh, the heartbeats of the fetus in pregnant women. And the reason that this screenshot exists is because in uh, in certain instances of remote desktop, when you con connect to remote desktop, it shows you the background and then it gives you a login window, right? In the newer versions, they disabled that. So when you connect, it gives you a, a, a prompt before it shows you anything and says you have to log in with, cred with credentials. You can still change it back in the registry if you feel like it. But at some point, I want to say it was like before, it happened sometime between XP and Vista. At some point, they flipped that switch where now you can't, you can and you can re-enable it, but you can't just see things. In this case, the only, re only thing I had to do to get the screenshot was take the login window and drag it off the screen. This was like you connect to it publicly. Like you don't have to log in. You just see this. Um, Italian hydroelectric plant generating 408 kilowatts of power. That's past its team viewer license. Fun times. And get ready. DOS. <laughs> DOS. How? I <coughs> I noticed that a lot of the power plants are very low power. One megawatt is a tiny plant. Um, is that 16 megawatts is more normal? This is like a small gas mobile, mobile, mobile system. Is that, is that why you're finding so many power plants? Because they're little tiny gas? And Possibly. I honestly don't have a lot of explanation for this stuff. Mainly, it's sort of, if you recall the last hour, it's just me shouting and waving my arms going, what the hell? Um, I don't get any explanation for this sort of stuff, and I put it on the internet and it quietly goes away. But when I contact these people, they refuse to give me any details, they don't want to talk to me, it makes them look bad, so I just escalate to the public, and usually the public means the press gets involved, and then an article comes out about this stuff, and then the, the, the executives and the board see the article and go, ah, and then they fix it. So that's sort of been my approach, which it gets results. People take this stuff offline, but I don't get a lot of feedback and I don't get a lot of explanation. Like, I put stuff on Twitter, and like two days later, it's just gone. And I have to fish to find out why. But, you know, if we're talking like we're doing the altruistic thing, I really don't care why. But it's offline, and we're safer now, so who cares? Um, but yeah, um, uh, there's Linux folks in the room. Um, does that command line look like a DOS command line to you? No? Or actually, I shouldn't have said Linux. When was the last, uh, do you remember, anybody familiar with iExplorer.exe? You know what that is? Internet Explorer on DOS 6.2? Good job, guys. Derp hacker's gone derp. Uh, what people are doing uh, is, and I, ha I, have a, I, I had a bunch of these slides. I may have pulled them out. But um, attackers finding these systems online, blindly dumping keystrokes into some terminal, hoping to get some kind of compromise, and then moving on. So they're doing the same thing I'm doing, except instead of taking a screenshot, they're actively trying to exploit the host and then moving on. And because it's just like a shotgun, they're just spraying and praying, they're just injecting Windows commands everywhere. Uh, so you get these Windows injections, and then they move along, and then I find it later. And to the point of like um, X desktops, that, uh, you know, th that command, X host plus, is the command you type in to make your X 
server accept connections from anywhere. And this picture, look at the date at the top right. Like, I was building this deck the same day this picture was taken. So somebody typed this command, and in less than a matter of hours, this got picked up by Shodan. So like, what is the lifespan of a vulnerable computer on the internet? Like a matter of hours? And now it's in a talk. Like, <laughs> so yeah, like the short version is, if you're, if you're, like this is not an accident. Somebody typed this into a computer on purpose to make it public. This is not a mistake. Somebody like, fault, somebody had to Google this and they looked it up to make it public because convenience always trumps security. And this right here is the sort of quintessential like, this is the best note to finish off on. And now I'm ready for you guys to throw things at me. <laughs> Questions? We went to webcam. Yep. I saw the first thing you showed the guy has a keyboard there. Did yep. you find people typing like passwords and stuff? Mm -hmm. with, uh, uh, I haven't. Most of the cameras that you find aren't inside of buildings. They're not attached to computers. They're like, I don't see any in here, but they're surveillance cameras that are like attached to buildings and walls because the camera is itself a little embedded Linux platform with a, a camera device on it and it's wired in via wireless or Ethernet or what have you uh, to the network and usually if somebody poked a hole in a firewall so people can get to it or it exists outside of the firewall completely and you can just get to it publicly. So um, no, you don't see a lot of people's faces because in most cases that camera is a different camera. The camera on your laptop is protected by the operating system that hosts your machine. If I wanted to get into your webcam, I'd have to compromise your laptop first. It's not just a web interface on the internet. I'd have to like fish you or I'd have to get you to install a virus or click a link or do some stuff. And then once I had a shell on your computer, then I could mess with your laptop or mess with your camera, I should say. But yeah, the cameras that I find, these are the ones that are just publicly connected to the internet. Explain to me in all the slides you've shown how many were uh, just presenting information versus ones that would would have let you actually do something. It's not clear to me what, which, which we were seeing all the time. So if it has buttons, you can press them because in, uh, so I explained before you have like uh, a somatic HMI made by Siemens or Tritium Niagara uh, that. That's a touch panel that's just basically an embedded Windows CE box or a Linux box that talks Modbus to another device. That touch panel is living on, in, in, on a wall somewhere or on a piece of equipment. Like, it's too bad I lost the crematorium slide because I had a slide of a crematorium with a dead person in it on fire. And there's like buttons. It's a touch panel, right? So you're looking at a, an interface to a touch panel. And you can treat it just like a touch panel. You can move your mouse around and click on it and interact with it. So anything that has buttons, you can, like the ski lift, you can turn it off and shout at the guy. Like, I mean, it gets ridiculous at some point. But basically, the, the, the easy way to answer the question is if it looks like you can interact with it, you can. Anybody else? Yeah. yeah, go for it. So from your data, can you, can you kind of uh, calculate a vulnerability index by a country? And if so, what would, where would you US fare compared to other developers? That's a tough call to make because if you're talking about just, well, it depends on how you quantify a vulnerability in this particular exercise. If you want to say, um, well, but, but then like that, that, that you're apples and oranges at that point just because there are people and there are systems. Like the system ex exists where the people are. So pe like I've seen people do these like, let's do a vulnerability map of the US and it shows you this overlay and you go, wow, that looks, okay, cool, now I know where they were, the things are the most vulnerable. And then you overlay a, <coughs> a population map on top of that and they're congruent. So the problems exist where the people exist, which sort of tells you something. There, there, surely there are cultural differences. For example, you could say like within systems of roughly the same um, you know, class and size, what is the probability that, that a US company will, will need no security, need no credentials versus that's, that's a pretty heavy lifting job because you have to quantify vulnerability. Like, is something publicly accessible on the internet, do you consider that a vulnerability? Like, is it a vulnerability despite the fact that they purposefully set it up to function that way? Uh, then there are other uh, instances of um, things that are public that are hardened enough that it's not trivial to get into them. Like newer installations of 
of Linux and Windows that are publicly accessible via only RDP or only SSH that have security uh, ar around them that don't allow brute forcing, that have alerting, and that have like active firewalling and IPS equipment and things like that, where you can see it, but if you mess up too much, you're banned forever. Um, so does that count as a vuln when you stand it next to like a power plant that's publicly accessible on online that you can just turn off? So it, like vulnerability is a broad enough categorization where you start getting into, you have to get into the minutiae to be able to do that kind of measurement, right? And you have to, you have to define terms at that point. Um, so I have not done that. Um, if somebody wants to give me a small dump truck full of money, I'm happy to put my guys on it and we could do a thing and it would be a cool talk, but like that's months and months and months and months of scanning the internet and work and that's like 12 dudes or ladies, whoever, 12 people in a room with chains around them for <laughs> six months and maybe no food. I don't know. <laughs> but it's a lot of work. Uh, you, might, you might consider that uh, a VNC... Uh, oh, yeah, intern. That's a good job. Is <laughs> uh, no, uh, you, you might be able to detect which ones uh, of these panels are actually VNC. Oh. By, by, uh, you may be able to uh, count the images automatically by doing some kind of image recognition for the typical features that... Uh, it's actually even easier. Um, we did a scan a year and a half, two years ago, a year and a half ago, on stage at DEF CON, like DEF CON 23, yeah, two years ago. And uh, we did the scan, and it resulted in 36 or 38,000 images. Like publicly accessible, no authentication, VNC endpoints. 18,000 of those, and that, it boggles the mind, I don't know how, were cabs in, like, in Korea. South, South Korea, cabs in South Korea. And they were all these bizarre horizontal advertisements that were like turned vertically on a display in the back of a cab in Korea. So of the 36,000, 18 or so were just whoosh, throw them out because we don't care, they're ads. Um, so that leaves you with what? Like 18, 19, something like that. I can't math. <laughs> well, enough to go through by hand. It took me four days of just my own time going through them by hand. So if you have a team of three or four people, it's several hours of work. So it's probably less work to just do it by hand than it is to try and write an algorithm to do it for you. Um, but the touch panels, um, they're mainly four by three. Um, and in most cases, you should be able to tell pretty easily if, um, if it's a desktop or a touch panel based just on the resolution. If the resolution comes back as like 1024 by 768 or like a typical desktop resolution, you can just classify it as a desktop and the rest are going to be touch panels. So, what, are, are there any? So, you presented a lot of things with a with no security. Yep. How what fraction of things are, are come out of the box that way? Um, Is there a number, are they still doing that? Presumably, everything that I've shown you, with some exception, comes out of the box that way. But it's because it's specifically not designed to be connected to the public internet. The reason that it is vulnerable, the reason that it was found, was because somebody connected it to the internet when they shouldn't have. So, what? So what are the statistics on bad things that have happened through these open connections? Um, it's kind of a gray area. I haven't seen any major news. Or, like I saw there was a thing in the news last year or the year before about a steel smelting plant that had some kind of hack, and there were and it was in Germany, and there were some there were some vague details. Um, you hear like somebody turned a power plant off, like. <laughs> People are messing with this stuff, but so far, at least that I've been able to tell, nobody's, nobody's doing like the die hard for fire sale thing where they try and turn off a whole city or blow up a power plant or something like that. Nobody wants, so my explanation for that was like, think of like, let's say you're, let's use a bad example, let's say you're China and you want, you want leverage over the United States. Well, in column A, you can just go and blow everything up and you get a lot of dead people. You can't rob dead people. It's a lot easier to like just get in there and steal from people and steal IP and funnel money and get ideas and just eavesdrop and, and spy because it's more lucrative. It's, you make more money spying on people than you do by blowing them up. But that's just entirely speculation on my point. If I was, if I was China and I was, I was doing that sort of stuff, I would, I would sit and wait and spy and steal IP and do that rather than blow stuff up. Because you blow stuff up, it causes a immediate, it's, it's immediate negative feedback. They immediately realize something was wrong, and they know what the problem was, and they know how to fix it. And then you, you know, all the, all these people die, and you have new laws happen. It's all over the news, and suddenly the jig is up, and your little secret thing is now public, and it's gone. 
I was thinking of the ransom issue. Oh, the ransomware? Uh, that's not, that doesn't necessarily have much to do with this. Uh, the, 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 my presumption of why we're seeing a lot of ransomware in hospitals is because one hospital paid. One hospital paid the ransom, and everyone else went, oh, easy money, and now they're all going after hospitals. So it's one of the whole, the, what's that predator line? If it bleeds, we can kill it. Same sort of thing. Like if there's blood in the water, the sharks will come. Same, it's the same deal. The reason that the hospitals are popular right now is because somebody paid, and now people are, yeah. And it's, yeah. Do one more question, and then. Okay, the last, I had two, actually. And what the, the second one was, do you have a honeypot, and how often does it get traded if you do? Um, do you have access to AWS or DigitalOcean? To which one? Uh, Amazon EC2? Yeah. Spin up a host, any VM. The dinkiest, free, most free one you can, you, can, uh, you can spin up. You can set up EC2 instances for free. Spin up a free instance, the T1 micro or whatever it is. Uh, do TCP dump, not port SSH, and hit enter and just watch. Like, is, there's this, I call it the white noise of the internet. You're perpetually, the whole internet's being scanned, everything is being attacked 24 7 all the time. I mean, I, the last slide, like this thing right here, the lifespan of this host of being on the internet with X11 exposed was like a couple of hours. Within a couple of hours, this host got screenshotted and then I put it in a presentation. Like, and, and I'm like a white hat. Like I had no intention of compromising this, this machine and doing malicious stuff with it. But if a bad guy finds this, this is, just, this is literally just a root shell that requires zero effort to get into. That, that's full control of a host um, with no effort, no hacking, no cracking, no malware, nothing. You just VNC in and boop, you have a root. You can do whatever you want with this box. And there's thousands of these. So, you know, I, I'm, so put it this way. Bad guys in other countries have been doing this for at least 15 to 20 years, at least. And just now we're getting to a point in the US where I can do talks like this and not get arrested after I get off stage. They have a 15 year lead on us. And we're just getting to the point where we're convincing people that this isn't scary, that this should be researched, that we should talk about this in the open and not just get immediately hauled away in shackles. So as long as that's the case, we're continually going to be behind the ball. So if you want an example of what it looks like in the raw, put a machine on the internet and just TCP dump and watch. And within minutes, you'll get brute force attacks. You'll get random, random pot shots of, of people trying to throw exploits at you. It's everywhere. It's all the time. So um, yeah, it's, it's very, very noisy out there. And TCP dump will show you. There, I don't have any specs, but uh, there's, um, is it the ISC Storm Center or the SANS Storm Center? There's a place where you can look and see what the noise looks like. Um, and Cisco Talos, I have a couple of friends that work at Cisco Talos that just did a really great blog, blog article on the, specifically the ransomware uh, that came out recently because it's so popular. So there's a bunch of resources on the internet. Cisco Talos and uh, the SANS ISC Storm Center are two really good ones um, that'll tell you sort of an idea of what the topography is from like a 10,000 foot view. Yeah, you might even, I mean, you'll even uh, at the storm center, you will get um, handle or long mm. and yeah. ask questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What am I seeing? Right, yeah. What's up? Yeah, so, Dan, here, thank you. Well, thank you again. Yeah.